so much to unpack here and I won't unpack it all. All right, everybody, I'm about to watch the Scrub Daddy. And uh, you've already know, you already know who Scrub Daddy is. That's, it's a sponge you see everywhere. Um, I'm gonna break down this pitch to you and what was going on on the set that day. And you know, listen, if you want more information on how we break down pitches and uh, you know what we're thinking so you can empower yourself when you're out there pitching or investing, make sure you subscribe. All right, here we go. Let's go to the Scrub Daddy. First into the shark tank is Aaron Krause, who believes his product will make everyday cleaning easier. Oh my God, look how skinny I am. Amazing, amazing. Hi sharks, I'm Aaron Krause from Philadelphia, and I'm known as the daddy of the scrub daddy, the cutest but most high tech scrubbing tool in the world. Today, I'm seeking a $100,000 investment in exchange for 10% equity in the scrub daddy business. It's the greatest kitchen scrubbing tool you ever used because Scrub Daddy completely changes its texture by just adjusting your water temperature. Let me show you how that works. Here I've got some hot water. Here I've got some cold water. When I immerse the Scrub Daddies in the hot and cold water, a complete transformation occurs. Now, to show you that, I've got 10 pound weights. Here, under the 10 pounds, it's soft and compressible. And that's like a sponge. That's for your general scrubbing applications. But here, Check that out. It's hard and firm. That's gonna be for heavy duty scrubbing applications. We burned on brown and gravy, tomato sauce, cheese, and mustard onto a glass stove top and a stainless steel pan. I'm gonna take the scrub daddy, and you're gonna see it's just gonna attack right into that burned on mess, scrubbing it right off. And remember, I'm just using water. So just so you know, he's doing this live. There is no editing. There is no let's take it over. There is no let's splicing it together. I am watching for the first time I can say like an infomercial just live and he's gotten me hooked at this moment. Right through that. It won't scratch any of your surfaces, but it will clean them beautifully. Now, Scrub Dye is not really smiling anymore, so I'm gonna put him here in the warm water and in just a couple seconds, voila. He's back to bright, fresh, and clean every time. Sharks, that's not just another smiling face. You put it on your hand. You can get to the bottom and clean the side. Oh my one move. Look at that. He put two fingers in it and then he cleaned the bottom. How many times are you trying to get into the bottom of your glass? The thing is clean as, as I don't know what after he just scrubbed some nasty grease off of it and he's still smiling at me. My mouth, that cleans spoons. Oh. Forks, spatulas, even large serving spoons on both sides. A spoon! Sharks, with your help, scrub that I will be scrubbing and smiling in every kitchen in the world. Woo! Wow. Wow. Scrub Daddy. I never witnessed a live infomercial. Oh, see, I, see, I said it again. I never, you know, by the way, I gotta tell you, I haven't watched this pitch ever since the day that it aired, and I'll tell you why towards the end. <laughs> that was incredible. Do you have samples? I do. Where are you selling this now? Thank you. Well, currently, we have it in five supermarkets in the Philadelphia area. We also sell it on our website. I've been on QVC three times over about three months. And how'd it go? Fantastic, they've invited me back over and over. And every time I go on, they reorder 30% more than the last time. So Scrub Daddy is humming. And what were your total sales? QVC, wholesale? Just north of $100,000, only in four months. Do you have a patent on this? I actually have a patent. I have two more patents. So at one point, it sounds very impressive, right? I went on QVC, they've ordered 30% more every single time but then you ask them the sales a hundred thousand dollars now okay i understand the sales of the product the product is a five dollar product but that doesn't sound like even though it's four months it doesn't sound a lot for being on such a massive channel like qvc so right now you're like mm, where is he is he just really young and we having this great opportunity or is he going to tell us that there's other problems he's having because he should have sold more if you really think about it, right? QVC can't operate if he has a hundred thousand dollars in sales in four months. QVC can't operate and run a successful business if every time he goes on he only sells twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars. Two more pending. We have the trademark. We have domain names. Okay, Aaron. What do you need the hundred thousand dollars for? 
What I want to do is set up an independent manufacturing facility with automated equipment. Why do you need to go into your own facility? The biggest problem is I'm on their time schedule. Are you saying that you could be making more revenue if you were 24-7 making scrub daddies? The way QVC is going, and we're just about to launch in a whole bunch of stores, we're going to need that capacity. And I have 18 years experience running a manufacturing plant that runs 24 hours a day. I know exactly what I need to do to make this thing really efficient. And I'm looking to get a strategic partner who can open this up into the retail stores. I'm only in five supermarkets. That's it. What's your cost? The cost to make one's about a dollar. What are you selling them for? About $2.80. Wholesale? Wholesale. This needs to be in every supermarket, drugstore, Walgreens, it's so CBS. expensive. Mrs. Slabinski goes to the store and picks this off the shelf and says, hey, it's a piece of foam with a smiley face on it. It costs two cents to make in China. That's what she's thinking. Because a Brillo pad, which is a traditional product, is what? A 20 percent. You're of comparing the price? it to the lowest end of the lowest end. You take it up to the highest end. Talk about the, the, the ones like Dobie pads or other pads out there that are, you know, brand Scrub names. Daddy, I, I think you've done a great job today, but I don't know if it's gonna work in retail. I don't I don't buy into that vision. Just in the packaging. I just don't know if I see Rob, the difference. Robert, I, it doesn't sell on a shelf, correct. But if you put it in display shippers, which we've built, these beautiful cardboard display shippers, and it communicates the message to every customer. You're end caps. You're going to have to pay for those things. It's well, hard to get them, even if you pay for them. Great job today, but I, I don't see the retail vision. I'm out. I understand. I like the product. I think you've, you're doing great things. You're doing it the exact right way. But when I hear QVC, no disrespect to Lori, when a company's sales are completely dependent on QVC, that's a disaster waiting to happen. I've got 3,000 stores lined up right now. We're going to be in 3,000 stores. I understand, but even, OK, put aside QVC. You're still a one product company, right? Not for long. We've got Scrub Mommy. We've got Scrub Baby for doing baby <laughs> bottles. I've got a holder that sits it on your sink and has got drains in the legs. You don't understand who you're dealing with. I am, I am <laughs> you're right. Oh. I'm not doubting the scrub market. I'm not doubting you are the scrub daddy, but I'm not a scrub pimp. So I'm out. Ain't a scrub pimp. You know what interested me once you just said, he said, we got 3,000 stores waiting. Now, that's a question, right? If you have $100,000 in sales and you have 3,000 stores waiting, why are they just waiting? Now, maybe that's his capacity issue, but that's where you start to go. It sounds super interesting. Maybe it's great. Or is he maybe being a little too optimistic and he doesn't have them waiting? He has them like, yeah, call me when you got something. So that's a question. That hurts, Mark. I wanted to work with you so bad. Mark, QVC does over $8 billion in sales a year, and I've done over $500 million myself. Yes, you have, and you rotate products in and out of there, and once those products are out, they're out. How about this deal? $100,000 for 50%. <laughs> now, that's just cruel. I don't, I don't think somebody who says an offer like that, and you know, Kevin can be looking at it like, you know, uh, he doesn't know if he's, it's, it's worth his time and energy and he's gonna risk it, let's work, risk it for something that's really gonna do well because if the, he has a 10% chance of making his money back, he's gonna make a lot of it back. But at that point, $100,000 off of 50% of your company, that's just cruel. Let's start the bidding there. All right, you're out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm somebody who could paint any picture, and I think that Laurie is a vicious, backstabbing shark. That's all true. But sometimes I love her as well, because she is the QVC queen. So I'm offering $50,000 for 15% if you can raise the rest from Laurie and if she wants to do business with me. Well, here's the thing. Don't you hate when they go to commercial right at that point? You know something bad is about to happen. So I'm offering $50,000 for 15% if you can raise the rest from Lori and if she wants to do business with me. Well, here's the thing. You've heard me say before, I can tell instantly if it's a hero or a zero. And I think what you've got here is a hero. No offense, Damon. I don't need you. You don't. My offer is $100,000 for 30%. 
I will get you into infomercial right away, and I'm pretty confident that we could get this into all retail stores across the country within literally weeks. I'll tell you what I'll do for you. I'll give you $100,000. We'll never agree on what percentage I should get. I'm going to change the model completely. You're going to keep the whole company. I know the outcome. I'm getting nervous right now already. The whole company. Maybe that's why Shark Tank works. But I want to be your financier. I want you to give me 50 cents on every unit sold until I get the 100K back. Then it drops to 10 cents in perpetuity. He just wants to increase your cost of goods sold by 50%. Nothing, right? Why give up 30% of your company? Just to sweeten the pot a little bit, I'm going to give you $150,000 or 25%. Whoa. What are you going to do? I'm changing my offer, actually. $100,000, but for 25%. The experience, the connections, everything that I have, it will be successful. I am partnered with the best of them. Why give up any part of Scrub Daddy? Think of the relationship you have with this sponge. <laughs> You're selling this thing out, and it's going to cry. It won't be happy anymore. QVC. <laughs> infomercial and into every single retailer worldwide. That's the power of what we can do just by one infomercial spot. I can get you there. I mean, he wait, knows wait, that I'm already. not done. We've, not heard done. That already. We've heard that already. What is, I, what? I want the answer to one question, all right? Do you think 25% of the equity in your company is worth more or less than 10 cents a unit in perpetuity? And he's this all is, talk. Where is he going to take you? It doesn't matter. Ask it does the, matter. Because you can take, are you, can you keep 25% of this business, which may sell 10 million of these, and you keep it all for yourself. But you're going to be keeping nothing because he doesn't know how to get you this mean, out you there You haven't had any success. You're an idiot. You don't know what to do. I know what to do. Exactly. Did it happen? All right. He just called a man an idiot and trying to become his partner. I don't know if that works out quite well. If anybody calls you an idiot trying to be your partner, I don't think they're a good partner for you. Not all money is good money. To do? I know what to do. Exactly! I just did a half a billion dollar deal with Walmart. Half a billion. But that doesn't so mean anything. What product retail. is it? Okay, I, I'd like to Wait review the Wait a second, the, the let the sponge that keep changing. speak. And it's saying, Lori. go with Kevin. <laughs> Aaron, they're like children out there. It's awful. Let's recap. Yeah, let's recap, are. please. 150,000 for 25 percent. Okay. From Damon, Kevin. A hundred thousand dollars for no percent, and a tiny tithe of 10 cents. You keep all the equity. Lori is offering you a hundred thousand for 25 percent. I offered 150 last time. Whoa! Hang I, didn't, on. I didn't hear that. 100, Lori. Oh well, I changed my mind. 150,000 for 25 percent. I'll make you a millionaire within a year. So mine just went to 175. Whoa! We are fighting over this one. She said only 100 before, now she's 150, now I'm 175. Up to 175? Yeah. Mine just went to two. Whoa! Whoa! Oh! Lori pulling out the wallet on me. The good news is, I just made you an extra 100,000. I'm out. I wanted to stick it to her. Ouch. Wow. I'll drop the 50 cents down to 25 cents until the 100K is recovered, and then go to 10 cents. Will you go to 5 cents? Seven and a half, it's a deal. OK, Aaron, you've got two offers on the table. What are you going to do? You have to make up your mind right now. You don't see the benefit of having me as a partner. I never said that. You need to tell me right now whether you're going with me or not, or I'm out. I'm here for you. I think your deal is awesome. Um, the equity amount is, is too much. Would you consider coming down to 20? You know what? I will. I'll go to 20. We got a deal. Got a deal. All right. Good. So much to unpack here, and I won't unpack it all. All right. So 
First of all, the reason why I never looked at this this uh, again is because Scrub Daddy is the second best-selling product in Shark Tank history that ever got an investment. It's Lori's. Everything she said she would do, <laughs> she did. So kudos to her. Uh, a lot of time we up there, we say we're going to do things and we try our best and some things just don't work out as planned because a lot of things are moving and around. But Lori absolutely over-provided and did what she did to help Aaron, but... I think Aaron said it too. He said, you don't know who I am because Aaron is an absolute amazing founder and has done remarkable things with the product. Now, what else can we learn from there? Well, I knew I didn't have a firm ground to stand on because Laurie is somebody who's really recognized for a QVC. QVC is heavily skewed towards women who are buying and controlling the household products and products in general or their purchasing power in general of what's going on so Lori knows how to resonate with it and she was trying to kind of attack me which is fine we attack each other oh you did a half a billion dollar deal with Walmart but what was it well how does she know what what, what it was okay it happened to be cold it wasn't sponges or it wasn't stuff like that maybe she had more stuff like that so I still got a little ticked off and I was like all right well I'm gonna at least raise the price on her so I ratcheted it up just to make her feel bad about if she's going to do the deal and let her you know knock her down a notch and i cost her another hundred thousand dollars so i'm gloating she's uh you know feeling it but guess what her reducing when he said can you reduce her in 25 to 20 and she's still at a two hundred thousand dollars and she didn't pull it back at some point she said no i really believe in this thing and forget what damon did i really believe in it because naturally if you were like crap I'm out of a hundred thousand more than what he came in asking for. Now he's saying to reduce my ass from twenty-five to twenty. Kevin is saying some crazy stuff, so he's not going to go with Kevin. And Damon's already out. I'm the last one to now really negotiate this. Let me save some of my money back and go. You know what? Let me give you one fifty for the twenty. But well, she still did the deal at twenty percent for two hundred. That means even though I tried to rattle her, I tried to shake her, she still believed in it. So I won the battle, but she's doing so well with the product that Lori clearly won the war. So there's a lot of negotiation tactics you can pull from that. Whether if somebody calls you an idiot, where should you stand? Whether somebody's talking 50% of your hard earned property and company, what should you do on the, you know, when they're doing that? Because that's damn near an insult. Uh, when you're in negotiations, can you rattle all the person by ratcheting the price up and hopefully crumbling them and she falls out and I come back in at the last moment? Or if you're lowering, you have so much confidence in what you're selling or what you're saying and the product and you don't let somebody rattle you but for so long. I think there's a lot of things to learn here from the Scrub Daddy and more importantly, Aaron is a great founder and I talk to him uh, here and there and I have a massive amount of respect for him. And of course, my fellow Shark Lori, you can learn from that. If you wanna learn more insight on ways to negotiate, ways to pitch, ways to get investments, ways to position your company or yourself, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. I wish you love and power your life. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. Check you later.